Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, first of all, I would like to get the confirmation from you guys if you could hear me. So please, anyone, if, if you guys, anyone of you could type that if you can hear me clearly. We can hear you if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I'm glad. But uh, I'm just waiting from the attendees if somebody could confirm me. If you could see the message, let me know. All right, perfect. All right, guys, so we are going to start in a few minutes. And uh, just to get an idea where you guys are in the world, I would love to know the location. Actually, people start already putting it. I see, I see Mauritius, and I see London. I am sitting in a small village in uh, Holland somewhere. And Adam and colleagues and his friends, they are sitting in Estonia right now. Um, just one or two minutes so that other people can join, and then we can start this event. Yeah, so we're actually in the eEstonia showroom at the moment. So this is where we, where Estonia showcases its digital capabilities. Uh, and the room is really busy at the moment, or the, the whole building is really busy because Estonia is hosting the EU Council presidency. So we have lots of politicians and journalists coming back in here uh, a lot. But uh, yeah, we thought it was really important to, to give time to, to do this today. And well, Adam, can you see my screen? Um, I can't see your screen. I can see the chat messages coming in, though, from all over. Awesome. Awesome, guys. I'm glad I can see a lot of countries there. That's mind-blowing. You know, that's us, right? Digital nomads. Um, Someone says it looks like a sauna. It, it does look <laughs> a bit like a sauna. <laughs> that's Estonia. what I was wondering. What was that? But okay. All right, guys. So... Um, First of all, I would like to introduce myself. This is Danish. I'm a community volunteer. I'm the, the Facebook group you guys are part of. I'm some sort of like we are a team of eight to ten uh, volunteers, and we kind of manage that group. So um, it's, it's really exciting to see the way a group is growing. And um, of course, you know, digital nomadism is kind of getting famous. And uh, I would shamelessly claim that we are the one who's kind of shaping the future of work. And um, so a little bit about the community, guys. We have um, we are going to organize such events, such um, amazing events. So first of all, thank you, Adam, for taking this uh, the first kind of community event, and it's going to be an amazing event. And um, other than that, we have a community resource. So you guys already know dnlink.info um, is the community resource. It's like a, you know kind of non for profit, and I'm kind of managing it. And uh, it has all the resources that any digital nomad would need. Um, other than that, we have a community blog, which I'm actually looking for volunteers to write posts. So if any one of you uh, want to take a part in it, please message me. I will share my email address as well. Other than that, you can on Facebook send me a message. My name is Danish. Um, I'm, you know, like uh, there's uh, on the, in the group, there is a uh, post pinned uh, that was from me. So. Uh, you can message them from there. Uh, just last mention that um, we have a community sponsor. It's called Webinar Jam. So this software we are using right now, and all of you are joining that software, uh, this is actually a courtesy from Webinar Jam. So I really, really thank them for offering us this new software so we can organize uh, such a great event. Um, all right, guys. So now I'm going to hand over to Adam. And um, Adam and friends actually... Uh, Again, thank you very much for all of them for joining, taking out the time and sharing this uh, valuable information. And they are the most credible uh, resource, I believe, because they are the ones who are running this e-residency program. So you can ask um, any burning questions you have, because I noticed there are a lot of questions in the group. So we decided, me and Adam kind of collaborated and say, hey, let's throw this event and see how it goes. So we, uh, we will be having, we might be having more in the future, depending on the response from you guys. So um, I think less we should kick in. I would not take much of your time. So I'm going to hand over to Adam. And Adam, take it away. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Danish. So uh, I mentioned actually that uh, here in the e-Estonia showroom, we, we host a lot of politicians. We host a lot of journalists. But, uh, and the e-residency program does get a lot of media coverage around the world. But we also thought it's very important to, to, to speak directly to, to people and 
Uh, Digital Nomads Around the World is a fantastic Facebook group, so we're really grateful that you invited us to come and do this. Just very quick introductions. Uh, so my name is Adam Rang. I do uh, communications and community engagement at eResidency. Um, I used to run my own business in Estonia before I came to do this. So I've kind of I've been through the process of uh, uh, and some of the pains of uh, running a company and, and seeing what that's like. So it gives a really good perspective and and, uh, and hearing about other, what other entrepreneurs now want to do uh, through Estonia's business environment. Um, and, and I'll let everyone else introduce themselves as well. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Oleg. Um, I'm a Ukrainian-born Canadian software developer. I came here uh, recently, actually. You know, most of my life I was running software companies, and uh, in the past several years, I got interested in the government technology and uh, and the developments there. And um, you know, this this led me to Estonia to residency. When I discovered a residency, I think I thought it was the perfect platform to develop what I what I thought uh, was going to be the evolution of governance. So I came here and uh, join the team. Yes, yeah, so my name is Mikko. I'm a head of product and one of the founders of Holloway, which is a digital banking solution for uh, entrepreneurs. And we aim to build the best digital solution to run your business. And that's why we are collaborating with the Estonia also, being their banking partner. So hi, guys. I'm Matt. I do the customer support in your residency. I've been doing it since September 2014 and continuing to help you guys out. Brilliant. So we're going to take you through e-residency and answer as many kind of questions that have come up as possible. Uh, and then at the end, we'll we'll switch back uh, to us and we will answer as many questions as we can. If we haven't covered anything, if, if you want more detail about it, then, then type your questions here. Um, we won't be able to see your questions as we're speaking, but at the end, we'll come back to it and we'll answer uh, as many as possible. So I'm just going to switch over. Great, so just gonna give you a very quick introduction to Estonia. So we're located in Northern Europe. We're part of the European Union. Um, we're a very small country, uh, but not only that, we've actually got an even smaller population. We're one of the most uh, sparsely populated countries in Europe. Um, we're, we're very far north. Uh, we're here in uh, Tallinn, we're on latitude 59. Uh, so it can get very cold here. And for all these reasons, actually, it can be very difficult attracting uh, new residents to Estonia. And that's part of the reason why e-residency came about. Uh, we have a very interesting language. Uh, so it, it's one of the most difficult languages in the world to learn um, as an English speaker. So it, we've got lots of strange letters which uh, form very strange words. Uh, and uh, Ads, would you be able to, I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce these words, but Ads, how do you pronounce these words? So the first word would be Erde, uh, which means night work. The second one is ja, ar, which is actually age of ice. And the last one, it is uh, Lagoft, which is the beer stomach. Well, if you drink too much beer. So I'm, I'm going to start with the good news that you do not need to learn Estonian in order to run an Estonian company. Like You're more than welcome to try uh, if you want. Um, but actually, our digital infrastructure here in Estonia works in, uh, in English and Russian as well. And actually, there's a really high level of English here in Estonia. Estonia sees itself as a Nordic country, um, and like other Nordic countries, has a very high level of English. Um, very quickly, I'm just going to tell you about our history. Uh, please don't worry, this is not going to be a history lesson. Um, however, most important thing to know is that um, our country was uh, formed in 1918 when we declared independence, and then independence was restored in 1991. And the story about my one is that we were broke back then. Our, our country was kind of bankrupt. We had few resources and we had very poor infrastructure. So essentially, we had to, Estonians had to rebuild everything from scratch. Now, that was in August 1991. So at the same time that the uh, revolution was taking place here to restore Estonian independence, the, the Internet revolution was just starting at the same time. It was actually the exact same month, August 1991, the first servers for the World Wide Web were switched on. So Estonians decided to create a digital nation instead, a new kind of country. And the basic principle behind the digital nation now is that you should be able to access everything online. Uh, we don't want you queuing up in government offices in order to access, uh, uh, in order to access uh, public services or, or private services for that matter either. 
Uh, in fact, we were just uh, we were visiting the tax office yesterday, and the tax office was virtually empty because you know people just don't go and queue up for services there. They they can do everything online, and the reason why we can do this is because Estonia rolled out a national ID card system. So every citizen and resident has a secure government-backed digital identity, which we use to verify ourselves online. Um, so it comes with a set of PIN codes and it plugs into our computer. And with that, we can access all public services. Um, there's actually only three things we can't do digitally in Estonia, and that's get married, get divorced and transact property. Uh, interestingly, it, that is not because we don't have the technology to do those things. It's because we think it's probably a bad idea if you can do those things at a click of a button at any time of the day or night. Uh, we don't want anyone having an argument in the middle of the night and then pressing alt control delete on their marriage. So those are the only things, three things you can't do. And when you think about the kind of digital nation that Estonia has built, um, and it's based on the idea of minimal bureaucracy and the idea that we should make things as easy as possible for citizens to, to do everything online. That's also really advantageous for entrepreneurs. So we're going to quickly take you through Estonia's business environment. And that's relevant to e-residency because e-residency is essentially us exporting our business environment to anyone in the world who wants to use it. So the most important thing is that our companies are trusted. So you know, access to fintech services is really difficult in some countries. And it's interesting that even as internet access is increasing everywhere around the world, opportunities online aren't equal. Um, depending on where you log on from or what passport you carry, you don't have the same access to the tools you need to grow your business. In Estonia, we, we have a great business environment where we can access uh, a wide range of services. Minimal bureaucracy. So I mentioned that um, by creating a digital nation, you don't have to queue up and do things offline. You don't actually have to interact with uh, government officials. Uh, and, you know, you are right now, you know, we, we work for the government of Estonia and we're saying that we will do our best to, to stay out of your way. Um, the third thing there is membership of the EU. Uh, I think sometimes this is misunderstood about e-residency when people assume that the main reason people want an EU company is because they want some kind of privileged access to the, the single market. Um, now, that is important, but actually the main reason why people want an EU company is because it's easier to conduct business online globally through an EU company. Um, so we've just returned from Ukraine where, you know, there's massive advantages in terms of what you can do online with your company, whether it's registered in the EU or registered in Ukraine, despite the fact that as an e-resident running an Estonian company, you can still live in Ukraine, work in Ukraine, and pay taxes in Ukraine. Uh, the next one is the low cost of business services. Um, so as an entrepreneur, there's certain things you're going to need, like accounting, virtual offices, uh, legal services. <coughs> in Estonia, these services are really globally competitive. Uh, it's one of the main reasons why Estonia benefits from e-residency, because we're a very small country. And when people become e-residents, they're more likely to do business with other companies in Estonia um, and sign up to these kind of services. So when e-residency was first established, people assumed that maybe it's going to be mostly people outside the EU who want to access the EU market. Uh, in actual fact, huge numbers of people across the EU, inside the EU, are signing up. Um, and the main reason for them is that they can get uh, low, they can run their business at a much lower cost um, and have a lot less hassle running that business. Uh, remote management. So Estonians are can run their businesses location independent already. Uh, using their digital ID, they can sign documents from anywhere in the world. They can file their taxes anywhere in the world. Uh, there's no reason to be inside uh, Estonia to do that business friendly regulations. So we want to make it as easy as possible to run a business. And through e-residency, we want to give the same rights to anyone else in the world uh, <laughs> to make it easy as possible to run a business. So one example here is that we don't require a local director. So in some countries, if you want to establish a country a company, you, you might have to partner with someone locally. And then that way you don't own 100% of the business. Uh, in Estonia, that's not the case. You can own your entire business. And finally, simple taxation. 
Um, Estonia is not a tax haven. However, you know, taxation is, is fair and simple here. It's very easy to pay online. It's structured in a way that uh, encourages business growth. So there's 0% tax on um, undistributed profits. So you only pay taxes in when you uh, pay dividends out. So one of the most famous uh, companies to, uh, uh, to come out of Estonia is Skype. Uh, I'm hoping many of you already know that Skype is an Estonian company. So <clears throat> the, the impact of Skype on Estonia is a bit like having a major international business school suddenly appearing overnight in our small country. And after Skype, a lot of people who were, who were successful through that then brought the, the skills and the money um, with them to set up other companies. And more important than skills and money, they brought that kind of ambition and that the knowledge that they can create uh, new startups that they can scale globally. So let me show you a few more Estonian companies. <laughs> so these are some that are in the news at the moment. Um, I think probably the most famous one after Skype now is TransferWise. Starship Technology famous as well. Uh, some of you might have used Pipedrive. And I, I don't know how many of you have seen uh, this graphic circulating on social media at the moment, um, but it, it kind of it talks about how the world is changing, that obviously the world's largest taxi company, Uber, owns no vehicles. The world's most popular media owner, Facebook, creates no content. The most valuable retailer, Alibaba, has no inventory. And, uh, and you get the idea. So what we want to do in Estonia is add our country to this. We believe that uh, Estonia can be one of the world's largest countries, even though we only have 1.3 million physical residents. And that's why e-residency was established. Now, before I lose my voice, I'm going to hand over to uh, Oleg. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, e-residency and uh, what it is. So having um, established this, this great digital nation, you know, having using it, been using it for uh, 15 years or so, Estonia decided that, uh, you know, since we're doing all these things online uh, pretty well, you know, what's what's the reason to restrict us to the physical boundaries of the country? And uh, this was the initial idea that started a residency. Um, so now a residency is the extension of the digital ID that's available to everybody in the world. Um, and... Um, Anybody can apply and uh, enjoy the same benefits that Estonians um, have been enjoying for uh, for years now. Uh, one of the main benefits is for you to be able to start a company, as Adam mentioned, uh, from the comfort of your home uh, by submitting an application uh, and obtaining the card, and then going to the business registry and uh, registering the company. Um, and. Uh, over the past two and a half years, over 20,000 people uh, from over 130 countries um, have signed up uh, to be e-residents. And actually, uh, over uh, 1,500 new companies were already established. So the total, uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct, 3,000 companies have been established by e-residents to date, and it continues to grow. And uh, just recently, we actually published a, a very interesting piece of stats that um, the number of newborn babies is about the same as the new e-residents registered weekly. So the same number of people are born in Estonia uh, as the number of people coming to become a residents of Estonia. Um. So how do you become an e-resident? There are only four simple steps. One is that you fill in the application at our website eresident.com.ee and complete the application with a state fee. Then your application is being reviewed and processed by the Estonia Police and Border Guard Board. E-Residency DigiID is a national document, so background check is performed. The Police and Border Guard Board will send you an email once the decision is made, and then you will see, receive another email uh, when the document is ready for pickup. Usually, this whole process takes about 1.5 months. Then you're ready to make a visit to an embassy or any other pickup location you choose, collect your document and uh, log in and start using these services. If you have any questions regarding the application process or the program or 
any other questions where you don't know where to find answers, the first step would be our website, eresident.gov.de. We are always improving it, putting more information, making information resources easier to find. And still, if you can't find info, just contact our support. Uh, the email address is at the bottom of our website. Thank you, Anta. So we, we like to show off about how easy it is to set up a, a company in Estonia. Uh, so Estonia got the Guinness World Record in 2009 for fastest time to establish a company, which was 18 minutes. Um, we have to be honest, though, you know, most people aren't going to do it that quickly. Um, it's typical for e-residents to set up their company in a day. So this is going to be the first time you can log in and use your, your ID card. Um, now, you can do it completely by yourself, but we, we do recommend using a business services provider. So we put a list on our website of companies that can provide accounting and virtual office and, and services like that. Um, and they also have services to help people set up their companies. <coughs> the one thing you're going to need is an address, a legal address in Estonia. Uh, now, we're not going to be kind of posting you things because, you know, we're a digital nation and we operate online. Uh, that's actually an EU requirement that an EU company needs to have uh, an address in that country. Um, so you can get an address from you, you could find a company that's just going to give you uh, the address very cheaply. Um, but these business service providers that you can work with to set up your company and get accounting and virtual office, uh, they can offer that as well. So you go to the, um, there'll be a link on our website that takes you to the, the company registration portal. Uh, then you can follow the steps or you can, there are several companies like LeapIn and OneOffice that have integrated that company registration portal into their own website. Um, so you can set it up that way. And then just on banking. So this has been a huge issue since e-residency was first established, how to access banking. So we have uh, traditional banks in Estonia, um, LHV and Swedbank, uh, both been opening accounts for e-residents. Um, unfortunately, they do require a visit to Estonia and they do have quite strict guidelines on who can get an account. Um, so generally, you have to have a connection to Estonia in order to open one of those accounts. Uh, we know that that's quite limiting. Um, not everyone can do that. Um, but fortunately, Holvi is now the third option. Uh, Holvi is a, a fintech firm rather than a traditional bank. And uh, the reason why uh, we're really keen to, to invite them along today is that they're the first company to uh, offer complete banking, business banking for e-residents entirely online. Uh, so I'm going to hand over now, actually. Thank you. Yeah, a little bit about uh, Holvi. So the company was founded in 2011 uh, in Helsinki, Finland, and we still have our headquarters there. And uh, Holvi is a banking service uh, which is built by entrepreneurs uh, for entrepreneurs. So all the founders, including me, uh, used to run a business before Holvi. And a lot of the people working there actually have background in running a business. So we know a lot of the challenges that entrepreneurs have in, in their daily business. From a regulate, regulatory perspective, we are a payment institution uh, authorized and regulated by the Financial Supervisory Authority of Finland. And uh, services are offered online only. So we are built everything uh, fully digitally. Uh, so the whole service is uh, really a digital banking service and uh, we operate uh, in Finland, Austria, Germany, and now we offer also services to e-residents. And uh, since 2016, we've been part of uh, BBVA's new digital businesses unit. So uh, a little bit about the Holvi account. So it's not really a traditional bank account, but it's much more. So. There's uh, tools to collect income. So there's a built-in invoicing tool, payment tracking, and uh, also all of you offers you your own shop front for online credit card payments. So basically you can, uh, with one click, open your online uh, store and start, start selling your products. Then also all of you offers you a uh, Holby MasterCard and uh, we have expense tracking added to the MasterCard. So basically when you're using your mobile, you can track your expenses and put them directly to your bookkeeping. And you can of course make Euro payments out of the Holvi account. So uh, the real uh, term for those are SEPA credit transfers. SEPA is the uh, single European payments area. So you can make Euro payments. And then uh, Holvi comes with its own uh, Finnish IBAN number 
and there's really good data export uh, opportunities to bookkeeping. So if you're working with your accountant or bookkeeper, you can export all the data whenever necessary. And uh, what we, you'll need for opening a Holvi account. So as an e-resident, you need your e-resident ID card and you need the ID card reader. You get those when you sign up as an e-resident. Uh, then you need a color photo of your passport, name page, and then you need your business registry extract for your OU, which is the limited company in Estonia. And uh, then I collected a few questions that uh, e-residents have asked our customer support. Uh, so starting from uh, why can't e-residents uh, use any bank online or offline? Uh, they surely can, uh, but uh, as, as was mentioned, all of it is the option that requires uh, no traveling, so you can open it uh, fully online. Of course, we offer much more than any bank, so we have fully digital solution with a lot of uh, other tools in addition to banking. Uh, and then they asked me a question, is Holvi a bank or is, and is Holvi account a bank account? So it's a current account from a customer perspective. There's no difference to a bank account. But from a regulatory perspective, we are a payment institution. And then uh, what is the total cost of using the account? So we take a monthly fee of 35 euros, which includes 500 uh, SEPA transactions. So if you are transacting less than 500 uh, transactions per month, then it's 35 euros. And also if you are utilizing our uh, shop front and collecting credit card payments, we take two and a half percent of those. So it's really a affordable solution. Uh, thank you very much. And we're going to come on to questions at the end of this. But I, I think just right now, just to ask kind of how come you can, the traditional banks require a connection to Estonia, a visit to Estonia. How come you don't require a connection to Estonia? What, what makes you different? Yeah, I think there's uh, two main reasons for that. Uh, tra traditional banks haven't really started to build an international footprint from the start. And that is our goal and has been from the start. So we really want to be a digital service that's offered uh, cross border. Another solution uh, uh, or thing that we've approached this is that uh, we've built uh, or know, know your customer process fully digital fashion. So that means that uh, we are utilizing uh, different registries in different countries to collect uh, data from our customers directly. So this is something that many of the traditional banks can't do or don't have the technology to do yet. So they require that you go physically to the bank branch and show your passport there. Brilliant, thank you very much. And we will all uh, come on to uh, questions and answers at the end as well. Um, before that, I just wanna cover a few very important topics and uh, taxes is one of them. Uh, and we know that taxation is really complicated for digital nomads, even without e-residency. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to publish more in-depth advice in future, looking at different case studies and um, yeah, and giving a lot more thorough advice. Um, but very generally uh, about the issue of taxation. So personal taxes, you pay where you live and work. So e-residents don't pay their taxes in Estonia. Uh, they tend not to. There isn't really a requirement to. It tends to be that people pay their personal taxes where they want to build up their, their social welfare, their pensions. Um, and obviously, e-residents do not live and work uh, in Estonia. Uh, company taxation is the real issue here. So generally, uh, well, company taxation is paid where, uh, where value is generated. And we know that that can get really complicated for digital nomads. If you have no fixed location, if you're constantly traveling, and some of you might be kind of have a, have a company with multiple co-founders as well, and you're all across different countries. Um, so the most important thing we can say to you is to always um, consult your own qualified tax professional if there is any doubt whatsoever about what your um, tax obligations might be. So mostly when we talk about e-residency, um, you know, people do actually live and work, they tend to live and work in one country, and it's actually quite clear kind of where the, the, uh, where the wealth is being generated. For digital nomads, it gets much more complicated, but then I'm sure many of you might really, might actually have like a home base in one particular country um, anyway, and it might be that that's where you pay your taxes. 
So most important advice uh, is consult your own qualified tax professional. And then in the near future, we're going to be publishing more in-depth guidelines uh, to help e-residents. But we know that even without e-residency, you know, e-residency makes it easier uh, to run a location independent company, but it doesn't uh, change your, 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 tax, uh, your tax residency. And from Estonia's perspective, we benefit from e-residency because we're a tiny country that benefits from making more friends around the world. Uh, so we, we, we're very clear that we don't want your tax money if it isn't owed here. Um, so e-residency can be part of the solution in making it more transparent about who owes money where and making sure that money um, gets paid to the correct uh, country. So some digital nomads are tax resident in Estonia. Uh, many of them aren't. And uh, please do always speak to your own um, qualified tax consultant. However, just a very quick note that if you are a tax resident in Estonia, then as I mentioned earlier, taxation here is simple and it's designed to encourage uh, company growth. So it's 20% tax, but that's only when you distribute dividends. Uh, so there's 0% tax on undistributed profits. When you keep money inside the company, it doesn't get taxed. And I'm just going to come on to share capital as well. Um, so the share capital in Estonia is 2,500 euros uh, when you're setting up a limited company. Um, so that protects you from personal liability. Um, but the good news is that you don't have to pay the share capital when you start your company. You can just click to defer. Um, and then you can take as long as you want. I think it's actually about nine years that you have to pay it in. Um, but really, in reality, you pay in your share capital before you pay dividends out. So that's the only requirement. You're not allowed to pay out dividends until you've paid um, uh, share capital in. So for most e-residents, what they tend to do is when they set up their business, they defer share capital. <coughs> and then after maybe about a year, when uh, they start being uh, more profitable, uh, they decide to pay that share capital in, then start taking dividends out. Um, before we, we're going to wrap up this presentation, and then we'll stop talking at you and we'll actually uh, answer your questions as many as we can. Um, but just very quickly, want to talk about the future of e-residency because this is a really exciting program. Um, been growing steadily for two years, but. Uh, you know, as more people discover e-residency, there's, there's more uses for e-residency being discovered. So Estonia's goal is to have 10 million e-residents by 2025. So that's why we're constantly trying to make it uh, a better experience. We're constantly trying to improve e-residency. So access to banking is one of the major improvements that we're, we're really thankful that Holvi launched uh, this service, the first complete banking solution for e-residents. Um, but the goal of e-residency is to democratize access to entrepreneurship globally. Um, and we believe that actually all countries uh, should be doing this or, or might be doing this very soon. There's certainly a number of countries that are actively looking into it. <clears throat> and, you know, we welcome competition and it's great for you if you've got different countries competing uh, for you as an e-resident. And the, the winning country is going to be whoever can offer the best business environment online and whoever can offer the best uh, public services online. So that's our goal, to use e-residency to ensure that anyone anywhere has the opportunity to start a business um, and succeed. Uh, now, before I uh, before I lose my voice again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna switch this off, and we're gonna start answering some questions. <clears throat> so, actually, if I start off by asking uh, Sam, because you you might have seen a lot of questions that came in while we were talking, uh, is there any in particular that came up quite a lot? Um, I think people would like some sort of clarification on taxation and maybe um, resources where where they can go to find out more. And some people were interested specifically in some of the tax treaties that Estonia has. Mm, okay. Uh, all the information about the tax treaties that the Estonian Tax and Customs Board has is on the Estonian Tax and Customs Board's website. So it's www.emta.ee. And if you find it difficult to find information, by the way, the Tax and the Customs Board, they are working on re their website as well to make info more, more easy to find. Um, if it's difficult to find, just uh, type in e-resident on their site in the search box and you can find the information. Or, or you can just type in the tax treaty. The list of it is on the website. If you still can't find it, just write our support. I'll send you the link. Mm. And uh, I guess we need to get better at making sure that information is available. So 
um, will produce an overview of uh, taxation and it will include kind of tax treaties. So Estonia does have a, a very large number of tax treaties, certainly with um, EU countries, uh, with Ukraine. Um, but yeah, it'd be good to put all that in one list and we'll, we'll get that up on our website. Um, so in the near future, in the very near future, we'll publish uh, detailed advice on those questions. Um, and then in the slightly longer term, we're going to publish really in-depth advice that we're uh, commissioning at the moment um, about uh, paying taxation as an e-resident. Yes, as Adam mentioned in the beginning, uh, we went to the Estonian Tax and Customs Board yesterday, and part of the reasons to visit them was to discuss the cooperation to make study guides for you guys. Um, so I, I can just see a question from Nicolay about PayPal. Um, so the question is whether it's possible to open a personal PayPal account um, and then without opening a company. So we'll talk more generally about PayPal, um, but it is, it is business banking we're talking about. So it is uh, kind of, uh, yeah, but when we talk about Holv the reason what makes Holvi so special is that they're offering uh, complete business banking uh, for e-residents entirely online. And then for PayPal as well, we can help people set up a business uh, PayPal account because that would be connected to your company. So, for example, even if you live in a, a country where PayPal is restricted, it's, it's only restricted to companies that are registered locally. But of course, as an e-resident, you're setting up uh, an Estonian company, an EU company, and that legal entity has all the same rights as a legal entity that any of us could go and set up ourselves here in person in Estonia. So that's why you can still access a PayPal business account um, through e-residency. Um, I, I don't know if you want to talk more generally about Holvi and PayPal. Yes, uh, there's a few differences between uh, Holvi and PayPal. So Holvi is sort of a real account with its own IBAN number and uh, PayPal is a virtual account. And in many ways, we are offering a lot of the same services that, that PayPal does. So, for example, you can uh, collect online payments through credit cards using a Holvi account and uh, you can uh, receive payments. But of course, the difference between uh, Holvi and PayPal also is that as uh, PayPal is not really a real account, so you always have to move the money to some other uh, account. So in Holvi, you can actually utilize the whole uh, service and take your own credit card, for example, and pay the expenses through that. So uh, Holvi is sort of a complete banking solution in that sense. Thank you. I saw a question from Ulrich about, uh, is it only a limited company you can open up for e-residency? Uh, no. So the two most common are, or the most common is a limited company, which in Estonia is known as an OU. Um, most e-residents do open those limited companies and they tend to find that opening a limited company through e-residency is a lot simpler and easier than opening them, operating as a shared, uh, a sole trader in their own country. Um, so an, a limited company does give you more benefits than, than sole trading. Um, the other one which we start to see e-residents increasingly open is an MTU, which is a social enterprise. Um, so if you're running a, a charity, um, a social enterprise, then you have that option as well. So limited companies and social enterprises are... are... I also saw a question about, is there an age limit? Uh, and, and his question was, uh, can you open a company as a senior citizen? Uh, and I must say that everyone is welcome. You know, I'm not too sure about a lower age limit, actually. Actually, the lower age limit, it is there. So if you're under 18, uh, we've had actually e-residents interested in that. If you're under 18, um, you can't perform any legal actions without a guardian. So you can still apply for e-residents in the GID, but you always need to confirm your actions or your signatures. So the lower age limit to act by yourself is 18. We don't have any upper age limit. Good. <laughs> no, I, I think the, um, the average age for an e is about 30 to 45, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, does Holvi provide accounting? Uh, Holvi does uh, bookkeeping, so basically we collect uh, uh, as part of the transactions all the data about VAT, for example, and categorization, 
how do you categorize that to your bookkeeping and then we have uh, really good uh, tools for exporting that data to your accountant so as such we don't offer accounting but we work really well with accountants let's see i'm just uh, uh sam's just showing me some questions that came in a bit earlier one of them is uh if my card gets stolen am i secure what about banking and company money um, so the first issue about security is that your card works with uh, a set of uh, PIN codes. Um, so with your card, only you can uh, log in online. Um, so if you do uh, misplace your card, if it gets lost, you do need to go through the process of, uh, of wait. It's a, it's a, you'd have to wait the same time that it takes to get an application um, in order to pick up your card again. And we completely understand that that's not ideal. Um, so it's one of the things that we're working on improving is making it easier to pick up your card and in less time. Um, yeah. um, maybe just a little side note. So yes, if only your cards, uh, only your card gets lost or stolen, you're okay because other people don't have your pin codes. But uh, if you happen to misplace your card with your pin codes, um, it's best to call the call to Estonia to the ID card uh, technical help. And they will ask you personal questions and they can close your certificates. So your card won't be able to be used. And of course, if you misplace your Holy MasterCard, you can just kill the access with your mobile phone. <laughs> and, um, uh, does e-residency also allow you free movement in the EU? Um, so no, basically the e-residency is an entirely digital identity. So it doesn't give you, it's not citizenship, it's not tax residency, and it's not physical residency. Um, so it's not going to give you any, uh, any movement rights, any, any rights to live in Estonia or elsewhere in the EU. There is, however, a, a new program launched um, by colleagues of ours uh, from another department um, startup Estonia, they have a uh, startup visa. And actually, the first people to benefit from that are e residents. E residents have set up their company and then applied for the startup visa to move to Estonia with their company. Um, so, no, the e residency program is designed as a digital identity to benefit anyone in the world who doesn't have to come to Estonia. Um, if you are interested in coming to Estonia, you we would love to see you here, um, in which case you should look into the startup visa offered by Startup Estonia. Um, are there any, so from Stefan, are there any business activities which require a special governmental license? Um, so ads, maybe you can uh, help. Uh... Yes, um, there are some business activities that do require a license. Um, the first place you could look is our state portal, ast.ee. You can choose the selection for entrepreneur and you will be able to find all the business activity fields that require special licensing. And usually the license is acquired from different ministries. But uh, with this, if you need any help, it's best to turn to the business service provider or for legal guidance to make sure that E-residency for UK citizens, anything we need to watch out for over the next two years? <laughs> uh, it's a very interesting question. Um, you might be able to tell that I have a, a, a British accent and um, so I, I do speak to a lot of um, Brits about e-residency and there has been a substantial increase in applications from the UK since the referendum. Um, there, there was a dramatic surge immediately afterwards. It went from, I think, was it three applications to about 51 um, per week. Now it's kind of leveled out, but it's still like very, uh, very steadily increasing, uh, twice as high as it was before. Um, so, yeah, obviously the, the Brexit is a concern to British entrepreneurs and that's, that's generating a lot of media coverage. And it's um, a lot of entrepreneurs have discovered e-residency because they're concerned uh, about the impact on their business. Uh, one thing I'd point out, actually, is that we really believe that the benefits of e-residency are bigger than Brexit. And by speaking to e-residents, uh, British e-residents, they're not 
they're not using e-residency just because they want privileged access to the single market. I think in some cases they are, uh, I know some people who have clients across Europe and especially if like you're an online uh, consultant and you have clients across Europe, then e-residency, signing up to e-residency now is a, is a great solution to just maintain those relationships, maintain an EU remaining business. Uh, for most people, though, they discover e-residency, then they realize that actually there's a lot more benefits to it. That, uh, it makes it easier to do a business online globally. Um, so, yeah, a lot of interest is being generated by Brexit. But, uh, you know, the program keeps growing regardless, including uh, both inside and outside the EU, uh, as well as the UK, whatever category you want to put them in. Hmm. Oleg, we've got a question yes. for you. So uh, let's see from Mark. I want to ask Oleg a question. We have a SaaS platform where you can manage your documents with our e-signature. We want uh, e-signature. We want to use e-signature by using Estonia timestamp on our platform with e-residency card or personal certificate token. Uh, okay. Um, sh sure. <laughs> I, without without seeing any any further details. Um, I, I don't. I don't think there's a technical challenge of any sort to to be able to do this. Uh, there's an API available for the card login, um, so you could do that. This is the way you can authenticate the user. Um, and there's, there's actually uh, software packages for uh, signing documents that are available. If you go to id.ee, you will be able to download the uh, apps for uh, for your platform um, to be able to sign documents. Um, so yeah, definitely these integrations are possible. Um, I think, you know, if, if you need any, any further technical details, you can reach us um, over email and uh, we'll provide them. Yeah, we're always happy to uh, support e-resident companies. You know, we always want to hear about what you're doing with your companies and when you're launching and how we can help promote you and work with you. Um, so please do keep us updated and contact us. Um, and uh, I guess, Oleg, in general, kind of, uh, you're seeing a lot more blockchain companies coming uh, sure. I mean, this is a hot topic right now, so there's uh, there's lots of interest there. Uh, that's not the only types of companies we're uh, we're seeing uh, being established, but yes, there's uh, there's a fair bit of that too. Hmm. But lots of software companies of different kinds, uh, and you know, you know, my background is software, so you know, I'm able to help uh, those that need some specific. Uh, answers on you know software or but not only that uh, business in general as well. Um, I saw a question came coming on what are the main benefits for EU citizens, uh, and this is really interesting because I mentioned earlier that like when e-residency was first established, people didn't really know who was going to benefit the most from it, and some of the assumptions was that e-residency was going to help people outside the EU gain access to the EU market. Um, actually, you know, a lot of growth has come from, I think probably most e-residents are from inside the European Union. Um, and the main benefit is, well, it's easier to run your business entirely online. Um, you can use business services here at much lower cost. Um, and I'll give an example, actually. I was speaking to an e-resident from Belgium. And in Belgium, if you want to start your company, you have to pay 16,500 euros in share capital. Uh, you also need to have, then you pay another couple of thousand euros uh, to, to incorporate your company. You also need to have an office, like you need to have office space. So even if, if you're a digital nomad and you would prefer working while traveling, or maybe you just prefer working from home or working from a local cafe, uh, the regulation in Belgium is that you need to show the office space that your company has. Um, so I guess in Estonia, we kind of, uh, we make it as easy as possible to run a company. And we also really want to welcome digital nomads and understand uh, their lifestyle and how we can accommodate them. We really believe that Estonia can be uh, the best country to accommodate digital nomads. Um, so we don't have those uh, difficult regulations. We have a low cost of business services and you can do everything entirely online. Uh, with minimal hassle. So a lot of people across the EU sign up uh, to e-residency. They can run their company through Estonia um, a lot easier, but they still have the same benefits of, you know, this person still runs their company in Belgium like any other uh, Belgian entrepreneur does, just with a lot less hassle. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, can I still use my UK or non-EU bank account with my company um, sole trading activity in Estonia? Um, so I guess when it comes to business banking, uh, you know, there's nothing that we would do to stop you from using a business bank in another country. But from the, the bank's perspective, they're, you know, they're very unlikely to uh, open a business bank account for a company registered in another country, uh, which is why, and actually, you know, it's an interesting question because our personal experience of running a company in the UK and Estonia at the same time, and, uh, you know, the, it was one brand, but with two different legal entities, one in Estonia, one in the UK, and then two different accounts in Estonia and the UK. Um, so you can do that. Um, it, it's going to be very difficult to try and attach a business bank account based in the UK to an Estonian company. Um, but also the question is whether you really want to, because um, I, what I found is that it was easier to run my Estonian company. So over time, I shut down my UK company, just focused on the Estonian company. Um, and now I work here and, I, and I'm telling everyone to do that. Um, but yeah, so... It, it, it's really it, when it comes to banking issues, it's really down. To, it's the decision of the banks and banks are private companies that uh, are going to naturally be cautious about the idea of opening for people in other countries, which is why uh, we think Holby is a fantastic solution. Um, there's a lot of questions coming in about can I register as a sole trader? Um, I'm going to get advice from Alex here, but I, I very rarely come across e-residents that want to be sole traders because a limited company is very easy, but maybe uh, Yes, technically you can, uh, but our program, we do um, not tell you, but uh, advise you to go for OE because as a sole prop proprietor, uh, you will be liable with everything with your own money. Uh, as an OU, uh, your company will be liable. So we do recommend coming from OU, but if you want to be a sole proprietor, you can. You can also turn to a service provider. They will guide you through the process. And uh, if you want to look what is the difference between the different uh, different business forms, you can also find information on East, AST.de state portal. It has the whole description of what is their differences. Just may maybe I'll add to that that it's, uh, you know, being a sole proprietor, exposes you to basically increased risk. Um, so your activity, you, you'll be personally liable for things like, uh, you know, copyright violations, you know, intended or unintended, uh, things like insurance, for example, and, and other decisions that you probably, you, you know, everything, everything that you do, so for example, if you take a credit and then you default on it and you're personally liable for that. Um, you know, corporations were created for, for this particular purpose. Um, so it's it's definitely in your interest to be a limited liability company uh, because then, you know, the, the officers and, and the directors of the company are protected uh, with various things uh, related to, to the corporate law. Um, yeah, yeah, and I would add one more thing that we at the moment open all the accounts only for OU, so limited companies. This might change in the future, but at the moment that makes most sense for us as well. Um, I see a question from, uh, let's see, Nicholas about how many people do you need to open a company uh, and just one. Uh, so actually the program is very popular with digital nomads, solo entrepreneurs, freelancers, uh, contractors. So yeah, one person and you don't, uh, I mentioned earlier, you don't need a local director. Um, a lot of countries do require that, Estonia doesn't. So one person, one digital nomads can register a company in Estonia. Um, but you're also welcome to uh, start a company with multiple co-founders. Um, Amit has asked uh, how long the card lasts. Uh, they read that it lasts three years. Um, so, yeah, and the program's been going for about two and a half years. So you're right that it it was, uh, or it is currently uh, three years. Um, so the first cards are, are going to expire soon, but actually we're going to, we, we're planning to extend the cards um, for longer than that. And that includes cards that have already been issued. 
so even if the date on them, if you've already got a card and it's got a date on them, uh, that doesn't matter because it's a digital ID and, uh, and we, we should be able to extend the cards. So we're going to, you're right, that's one thing that we need to communicate and update people on, but it's something we're working on at the moment. And uh, I'm not sure if there's anything you want to add. Or... Uh, actually, I do want to add something. Mm. Uh, so yeah, the certificates of the card are only valid for three years. As Adam said, we are working on it. Um, if you have been a new resident for a while and you are concerned, so the process of renewing it is the same as applying for a new one. If you already have an e-residency Digi ID, apply for a new one like a month or two months before it expires. You don't have to worry that uh, you won't be able to access these services afterwards. Some of you have had questions that uh, if you have a e-residency Digi ID and you switch to a new one, what happens to your company? Don't worry, um, the information that is really important is your Estonian personal ID code. And this will remain the same, well, basically till you die. The ID code is most important. The other information on the digital ID, it can change with the new IDs. But uh, your identity, your online identity will remain as it is. And um, Oleg, one for you actually, uh, interesting question from Khalid uh, asking about access to finance and can companies, e-residency companies be listed on stock exchanges? Well, sure, <laughs> you know, if, you, uh, if you're planning on listing a company on a stock exchange, you go through the, basically the you know, IPO process. Um, so the company that you're starting um, as an e-resident is actually no different from you know, a resident start a company. It's the same thing. Um, so yes, if this is the path that you choose, you can you can do it. And um, uh, Thunderbeam, do uh, many e-resident companies use them? I don't have statistics on the number of e-residents who are using Thunderbeam, but uh, yes, this is another company in Estonia that provides access to alternative uh, funding, so crowdfunding and other things. Um, you can use Thunderbeam uh, as you know, as a method to raise funds uh, for your company if you establish a, a resident company. Thanks, Alec. And uh, Andre asks about uh, what are the monthly costs uh, to maintain e-residency, a company um, for freelance or a small agency. I'm guessing we at least need to, uh, the virtual off, virtual address and the accounting. <coughs> yeah, you're right. So the, um, the only thing you legally require is an address in Estonia. Um, but most e-residents uh, want to get business services, uh, especially accounting, uh, to go along with that. Um, the feedback I get from e-residents is that they tend to spend about 60 to 100 euros per month on all the services that they need to, to run their business. Um, so we think that is globally very competitive. Um, at, I'm not sure if uh, in some you know, if, if you only rent the uh, virtual office, uh, I think it's about 20 euros a month, and the rest of it you can really do yourself um, through the portal. Um, if you have friends or, or somebody who, who can, you know, give you the address here, then it's free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, there, are, there are a variety of packages that the service providers offer, and, you know, they range depending on the business needs. Uh, so there are plans that include several things, or you can go, you know, paper use, uh, so that varies. That's you know I've heard things. So so one of the service providers, one office, I think they charge fifty dollars an hour uh, for most of the thing, or fifty euro an hour for most of the services they provide. So that's legal advice, accounting, other things. Um, but you know another service provider, Leapin, they have some packages where you can subscribe for a set fee and you'll get a number of hours dedicated to you and the number of services that you get for for that fee. Um, which is roughly, you know, 100 or something that we quote. Mm. So if you go to our website, then we put a list of um, uh, business service providers on there, which are all recommended by other e-residents. Um, so you're welcome to look through them. And obviously these are all private companies, so they'll, they'll all have different quotes and different services. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to, uh, uh, to take a look at their different options available. Um, Korea asks, uh, what is the primary target of the e-residency program and how would you expect uh, that to evolve in future? Um, digital nomads freelancers have different needs than a startup aiming to develop a global business. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. And so we've 
you know, I didn't know too much about digital nomads uh, until I kind of accidentally stumbled into this world. Um, but location independent entrepreneurs are, um, yeah, the main reason why people sign up for e-residency is to, to run a location independent business. Um, and so that's what we really focused on uh, supporting and, um, you know, we, we believe, you know, legal entity established through e-residency is one of the simplest ways to, to run a business, uh, no matter who you are. And so lots of different types of people are, are interested in the program, but it just so happens that it's the digital nomad community that have really, um, got excited about this. So there's no reason from our perspective, why we would stop others from, uh, uh, from starting businesses as well and supporting them. Um, but yeah, we do want to be the country that understands digital nomads. Yeah. And, you know, maybe a little bit to add to that. Um, I mean, look, business is business. It could be a business of one person or it could be, a, you know, a company of many people and, and so on. Um, I think, uh, the digital nomads, this, this particular trend is growing. And I think you know, it's my personal belief that the nature of work will change and, you know, we'll have most of the people in the future, um, you know, be, be the digital nomads or the one, one, the one person companies. Um, so the framework uh, for that will need to evolve. And, uh, we're really fortunate to be, to be on the very cutting edge of it, evolving these, these, uh, these frameworks. So, uh, digital nomads is definitely the area that we're focusing on. There are a number of different particular verticals that we're looking at. So, you know, digital nomads is, is one of the biggest one, I would say, uh, just because of the potential of the growth of the area. Uh, one person's asked how they can, uh, how they can get more information afterwards, how to speak to someone afterwards, uh, at... Hey, if you have any more questions, please write to our support. You go to our website, scroll down, you can find the email address. We'll do our best to reply to you as soon as we can. So any questions you have, if you can't find the info, just contact us. Perfect. And uh, I, uh, I think that's probably uh, a good question to, to end our webinar on. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if we couldn't answer your question. So I think we'd love to do more of these and answer as many questions as possible. Um, please do visit our website. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, send us any more questions you've got. But in the meantime, there's a few things that we're going to think about from this, about how we can get more information out to you all. Um, and yeah, thank you so much uh, for attending the, the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.